Bow hunting can be a very fickle game that we play. You know, it seems like from year to year, you know, so much can change. One year, it seems like you could do no wrong. Everything seems to go your way. You're making the right decisions. The deer are walking in the right spots, you're making the good shots. You're riding high on cloud nine. The very next year, you could be working harder than ever and it seems like nothing goes your way and you can't seem to catch a break. I know I'm certainly having one of those years this year, but fortunately for you guys and for my buddy Matt Miller, he's having one of those dream season years. So right now we're gonna join him on an awesome hunt for a great Illinois buck. We're gonna settle in, enjoy the evening. Hopefully something will show up. This is the best time of the year. This is exactly what we dream about. 30 degree temperature drop, storm just blew through, got consistent wind. Now we just need a buck to follow the script. Well, that is not what I had planned. <laughs> Actually, it was almost what I planned, but not the very tail end of it. That was a beautiful eight pointer. That is probably one of three deer that are old enough on this farm for me to shoot right now. And he came right through, perfectly upwind. He went and he scent checked that scrape over there and I grunted at him a couple of times. And uh, he didn't hear it, so I snort wheezed at him and he ran away. <laughs> I don't know if I got any decent footage of him or not, but he walked right in front of the trail camera over there and right down over the hill by the pond. So that's how it goes sometimes. I'm just gonna keep grinding. Hopefully another deer shows up or maybe he'll circle back around at some point this morning.
I have uh, definitely got a late start this morning. I had a bunch of work stuff I had to do this morning, but it is uh, late morning and I am in a tree and ready to go. So the good news is I'm here and I think I'm in a killer spot. The bad news is I had a buck that I would have loved to shoot this morning come right through at less than 10 yards as I was getting my camera gear all set up. So I did get a quick video on my phone, but uh, that's how it goes sometimes, I guess. <laughs> But uh, I am back on that farm. This is the spot where I killed that 10-pointer a couple of years ago. I left my, my new farm to try and come up here and hunt some different deer for a couple days. And uh, we'll see what happens. So weather conditions are perfect. We've got a northwest wind. Wind is right in my face. And uh, just a phenomenal pinch point on this side hill where it kind of comes down close to a creek bottom. And a lot of deer traffic through here over the years. So if you look right in front of me right now, that is exactly where that 10-pointer died from a couple of years ago. And it's because they just love running down through this. So we're going to just chill out and settle in and sit until dark today. It'll be not an all-day set, but maybe three-quarters of a day set. And uh, we'll see if it shows up. hunt has been unbelievable guys so i think there were six does that came out of the creek bottom behind me and i had two more does that were bedded out in front of me but i wasn't able to get the camera on them and we've got three bucks now that have come trolling through here and it's just been real consistent action and movement all day so about two o'clock right now we've got a few more hours of daylight and i expect things to pick up here a little bit in the next hour or so but it just goes to show guys if you have good thick thick cover that's heavily used by does for bedding this time of year you'll get deer movement consistent all day long in it so that's exactly what's happening we've got a big south facing slope right in front of me and uh, it's just super super thick nasty timber in here you can't see more than about 20 yards and uh these bucks with a northwest wind they're cruising the southeast corner of this piece of, of timber and uh, essentially what they're doing I think is I believe they're able to send check almost the entire piece of timber from this corner down here and we're getting just a bunch of traffic down here so we're gonna just stay put and uh, hopefully another big one shows up now that I'm set up and maybe we'll get a crack at them
well shot that one, but I don't know, it looked like he was three years old, and I know we've got some great ones on this property. Frustrating. It was so close. I had him less than 20 yards for a good 10 minutes and he came right across my track that I walked in here on. Totally the wrong direction. But uh, that's deer hunting, I guess. Oh my God. He's dead right there. Guys, I've got some great history with that deer. He is a big, big old eight pointer. And uh, I think it was the first year that we leased this farm, Frank and I, I had that deer and I passed him. I think he was a three year old at that point. And if I remember, it was either the second or the third year that we leased this farm. I tried to kill the deer. I had him at about 15 yards. Couldn't get him into a shooting lane. It was early season. And both of those times, it was about 50 yards uphill from this spot that I'm in right now. And because of those encounters, I moved this tree stand down the hill where this deer kept using this bottom. Sure enough, that's what he did today. And uh, he came in straight downwind. He had to have been coming down through here to check all these does and he got a little bit wonky and then he watched me draw on him and when he watched me draw he ran off about 20 yards stopped broadside and stared at me and uh i just let him have it <laughs> i think he crashed right down in that creek but i'm not 100 percent sure because right after i heard the crash i heard a deer take off behind me so i don't know if it was a separate deer or if he made it across to the other side or what it is but i'm gonna just chill out here for a couple minutes get the shakes over with <laughs> and uh we'll head down there and take a look at uh what happened and what the shot scene looks like and hopefully our deer is right down down there laying in the creek what an incredible year so far guys <laughs> well guys I gave it about half an hour or so and uh i am standing right now exactly where the deer were standing when i shot him so it's about a 22 23 yard shot and i'm gonna just real slowly make my way over to that stream crossing where i saw him go down in and crash so we'll see hopefully he's laying in there There's my arrow. Lots of penetration on that. 
I see bubbles. I'm betting he's laying right up here in this ditch. Look at that. I gotta figure out how to get down to him. Boy, that is a sight for sore eyes right there. And they sure do have a knack for dying in places that are hard to get them out of. <laughs> but I will take it. Well, it was a pretty late night last night, guys. I'm not gonna lie. It feels awful good to get a tag on a whitetail like this. And uh, it's been a tough season. I put a lot of time in on that new farm that we got. And uh, we got Maddie his first buck early in the year. And then I put a bunch of sets in. Saw a lot of deer, but just not the age class of the whitetails that I'm looking for. And we've got a lot of really strong up and comers on that farm. So I decided to spend the tail end of this week on that lease that Frank and I picked up. I think it was 2019. And uh, I've got some history with this deer as well. So the first year that we had that farm, Frank and I um, hunted a little bit. And uh, this deer actually showed up and I passed him. I think it was a big two and a half or a three year old at that point. And uh, the following year, 2020, I had him under 20 yards for a good 20 minutes. He made an appearance on the show. I wasn't able to get a shot on him. I couldn't get the, you know, the camera and the shooting lane all lined up at the same exact time. And, uh, you know, so that didn't end up working out. And then last year I didn't hunt that farm because I killed the big one behind our house and spent the rest of the season trying to get Maddie on his first year. So to go in there cold on that farm, I had one trail camera in there this year, had two pictures of him, and uh, I knew he was alive. And uh, to go in there with no information other than those two pictures, and to kill him on the very first set. It doesn't always work out that way, but let me tell you, it did yesterday, and I'm feeling awful fortunate for it, so. I still have one more tag. I think I'm gonna relax a little bit and wait for late season. I've got all that food on the new farm, and I'm gonna kinda of hope that maybe a big one moves in for the late season, and we'll get a crack at him. But, uh, you know, it's already been an incredible year. Maddie got his first buck, I got my first mule deer, and then to kill a five, six-year-old deer like this that I've got a ton of history with, it's a pretty special year for sure, so. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully next time, uh, you know, maybe I'll get a crack at another one. You'll see me sitting behind another one here, but uh, until then, bow hunter die. Well, once again, congratulations to Matt on a heck of a season. You know, I was fortunate enough to be there and film that uh, mule deer hunt in Wyoming. It was a great trip. You know, Matt comes back from that. And I know that he's excited about this buck that he just shot, but I bet you if I had to ask Matt if he was here right now, he's probably more excited about being there uh, with his son for that first buck experience. So heck of a year. I know, as Matt said, he's still got another tag in his pocket for late season. He's got a ton of food uh, on his farm. Unfortunately, as of right now, I don't think he's had any shooters uh, you know, show up in that food, but it does look like we finally got some cold weather uh, coming next week here in Illinois. So hopefully that's going to start to concentrate and push some of these deer into those food sources. It's been a little bit mild lately, so the late season uh, grind is about to begin next week. So, uh, guys, next up we are going to do an Ask the Experts question. Of course, this is being presented by our good friends over at Lancaster Archery. I'm not allowing PJ to answer any questions this week. I'm going to take this one just because I think this is an easy one and I'm going to enjoy answering it. So it comes from... Donald Pachniak, if I'm saying that correctly, and he says, how long is your typical rattling sequence and how often do you rattle? I think this is a great question uh, that honestly, I don't think there is a wrong answer to it. When it comes to rattling, I'm not sure you can do it too much, too little, uh, for too long or too short. There really is no good answer. For me personally, uh, I err on the side of uh, rattle often and rattle loud, uh, and I will start from pretty much the beginning of the season and I'll go almost to the end of the season. You know, if you guys are running trail cameras, which I'm sure most of you are, you're getting pictures of bucks fighting and sparring with one another from the minute they come out of velvet until the minute they shed their antlers. So there's bucks fighting all the time. It may not be as often or as intense early or late, but it is still absolutely happening. Uh, I do not go into the woods without my rattling antlers. Uh, so I rattle pretty much every time I hunt, guys. That includes right now in December. I might only rattle once, maybe a half hour before dark, just, just in case there's a buck in the general vicinity. 
um, that may hear that and come in if I'm not seeing something. But I literally do not go to the tree stand without my rattling antlers. When it comes to the rut, I rattle maybe every 30 minutes. I did a couple all day sits this year where I rattled dozens of times. And I mean, you can rattle and nothing, you know, will hear it or nothing will come in. 20, 30 minutes later, you can rattle again and there may be a buck that is moved within earshot that you're gonna rattle in. So again, in my opinion, rattling is like one of the things you can't do too much of. You know, earlier this year, I had a hunt where I watched two younger bucks fighting. This was in mid-October and they went at it for a solid 45 minutes. I mean, I watched those deer fight, move 10 minutes, or move 10 yards, fight again, move off where I couldn't see them, but I could still hear them fighting. I mean, this was 45 minutes of just constant antlers clashing together. So uh, if that doesn't show you that it's almost impossible to rattle for too long or too often, I don't know what does. So thank you guys for the question. Uh, we really appreciate it. Next up, we're gonna jump into some trophy photos. Uh, let's see what we got. Braden Hain, Chad Cummings, Isaac Pelletier, Jordan Bear, Nate Goss, and Vincent Trutner. I hope I said those close to accurately. Let's get to, ooh, ooh, Jordan, rocking that stash. I love it. Jordan is, Jordan's kind of our clear winner this week. We got some guys that aren't on their butts. This guy doesn't have a boat. Isaac, I struggled with pronouncing your name. I went through all this heartache trying to pronounce your name. You don't even have your bow in the photo. How many times have we got to do this? I feel like I'm talking to my children at home. Like how many times do I have to tell you to make your bed before you start making your bed? Guys, got to get the bow in the photo. Congratulations, Jordan Bear. That's an awesome buck. That's a really cool deer that you shot, Jordan. And it's a great photo. And I really like your mustache. So congratulations to Jordan. Make sure you send your information info at bowhunting.com. That is the email address where you send your info. We will get you your prize pack. You're going to get some bow hunter die swag. You're probably going to get some goodies from our friends over at HME or Hunter Specialties or maybe even a stealth cam if we got one around here. So guys, if you want to win free stuff, like it's literally that easy. Take a good trophy photo, send it to us. And if we pick you, you win free stuff. Like that's the easiest way to win free stuff. It's probably not even that easy when I think about it because you got to go shoot a deer first, which is not very easy. I'm proof positive of that. Then you got to take a good photo. That part is kind of easy. Go to our website, look up how to take a good trophy photo. We did a whole article. In fact, we did a whole video about it. So if you don't want to read and you just want to watch the video, how to take a good trophy photo, go to our website, watch that, take a good photo, send it in. Then you can win free gear. I'm done talking. It's going to get cold next week. We got Christmas barreling down on us. So I hope you guys are doing all your last minute Christmas shopping. Make sure you check out bowhunting.com. We've got sales and specials and bundles and all sorts of gear. And everybody wants bow hunter die stuff for Christmas. Even if they don't tell you they want it, trust me, they want it. So that's all I got. We'll see you guys next time right here, bow hunter die. When it's I check deer, they'll have not gotten a shot at the kind of buck that I'm hoping to get a shoot, shot at number of bucks that have been squirting in and out in front of the camera on both uh <clears throat>